So it's a great pleasure to have Julian uh, Peretsky for the last speaker of today. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. All right. The extremal point process of BBM in RD, please. Thank you. Um, so uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizer for giving me this opportunity. It's uh, very nice to give a, a, a talk in this uh, super nice conference. Um, and uh, I should warn you that uh, there, okay, there are particles, there is a limit, but it's not really a hydrodynamic limit. In fact, it's not, uh, I'm not looking at the bulk of things, I'm looking at extremal particles in this talk. So this is a, a, a joint work uh, with those people, Eugene Kim, Eyal Lubetsky, Bastien Malin, and Ofer Zaytouni. Uh, and it's about, well, the branching Brownian motion. So BBM is branching Brownian motion in dimension D. So let me start, um, and because also it's, you know, it's last talk of the day, and uh, so it's, I'm going to try, uh, you know, to, to explain the model uh, carefully. Uh, uh, and it's a bit different from what we've seen so far. So we have a branching Brownian motion. So what is it? It's a particle system where each particle uh, is uh, uh, performing independently a, a Brownian motion in R to so D. Uh, the particles are independent. They split at the branch at rate one into two particles each time. Uh, and then each of these daughter particles start again the same thing, okay? And so what you have is you have this kind of uh, growing cloud of particles. Which, so this is a, a simulation here, which I, I've stolen from uh, uh, Yal and uh, uh, Eugene and Kenofer. Um, and uh, usually you start with one particle at the origin, or you know, if I want to start somewhere else, I will tell you. And uh, uh, the notations I'm going to use is, you know, nt is going to be the number of particles alive at time t, essentially. And of course, nt is just a pure burst process. So we know this very well. Um, xi of t will be the position of particle i at time t in R to d. And I'm going to use uh, rit for the modulus of the particle i, so its distance to zero. And theta it is going to be its direction. So this is a point on the, uh, on the unit sphere, OK? Which, okay so these are the polar coordinate of particle uh, i. So what sort of question do you want to, to answer here? Um, so one thing you can, you can ask is, you know, how fast does this uh, cloud of particle grows? And, uh, you know, how, how far, so if you, if you call R star of T the, the maximal of those radii of particles, the maximal distance to zero at time T, you know, how large is that? How fast does it grow? Um, and one thing you can, uh, you know, you can notice immediately here is that if you project this BBM invention D in one particular direction, of course, you know, the movements then are normal bond motion. So this is just a normal one dimensional BBM. And so uh, you know very well where the, the rightmost or the, the extreme particle in one dimension, this is very well understood. And so certainly in dimension D, you will get something larger than that. Okay, so you can already see that larger dimension should help you grow faster, but you want to quantify this. And uh, the next thing you want to ask maybe is, let's call theta star of T the direction of this maximal displacement. You know, where do you find this particle, which is the furthest away? And at first sight, maybe this uh, sounds like a, a very naive or trivial question because of course, you know, this model is completely spherically symmetric. And so uh, at any time T, the direction of this maximum displacement is going to be completely uniform on the sphere. So it seems there is nothing to say. But let's say, let's say that I start, instead of starting from zero, I start from some point uh, X, which is in the east direction. You know, some, some distance away from the origin. So as time grows, what can you say about theta star t? You know, is it going to uh, converge in distribution to the uniform distribution on the sphere and, and forget this initial advantage towards the right? Or will you uh, keep in memory some, you know, some memory of this initial advantage? Okay, and uh, I think it's not a, a you know, straightforward to, to, to have an idea about what's going to happen here at first sight. Okay, so to, to explain what's going to happen to, what, what's happening in dimension D, um, I, need to, I need to go back and, and give a, 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 and recall what we know about dimension one, because okay, so this is about one, <laughs> about the one dimensional uh, process. So, okay, so this is the same process in dimension one, okay? Except now I'm going to uh, order them 
from uh, the topmost or the rightmost if you draw this vertically uh, to the to the lowest particle. So x one of t is the one which is the highest particle in this in this picture here, and x and t of t is the lowest which is here. Okay, and so you want to know you know again uh, what is the maximum displacement and, and so on. So this is not the right one. So so one thing which is important here is, uh, is uh, this uh, well-known and deep connection with uh, a, a reaction diffusion equation, which is a KPP equation, which we already heard uh, about in, in, uh, in the talk of Sarah. And uh, so if you call U of XT, let's say one minus the CDF for the position of the maximal particle, then it's known that this will solve the KPP equation, which I've written here. DTU is one half Laplacian U plus U times one minus U. And you start with an initial condition, which is the heavy side initial condition. So, uh, so if you know something about the behavior of the solution of the KPP equation, it will tell you uh, things about the behavior or the position of this maximal particle. And in fact, uh, so those are simulation now, which I've stolen from Eric Brunet. So if you start here at time zero from the heavy side initial condition and you let time evolve, so this is after one unit of time, after two units of time, five, 10, and 20 units of time, what you see is that there is this shape here, which seems to be always the same, and which is moving to the right at some constant velocity. Uh, and this is really the essence of this uh, result, which was obtained by uh, Kolmogorov, Petrovsky, and Piskunov in uh, 1937 in their celebrated papers, and also by, by Fischer at the same time, which is that if you look at the solution of this PD, uh, U, but you look around a very specific position, MT, which is going to give you essentially the position of this front, then you converge to a limit shape, which is W, okay? So this is a convergence to the traveling wave because W solves this OD and it's a traveling wave solution of the PD. And what is this front position? So KPP in 1937 tell you that the first order is root to T and then Bramson uh, in the early eighties uh, his celebratory result is that this is actually a log t correction, that the position, the front position should be, so if you take mt equal root to t minus three over two root to log t, then that works. So you have this, this, this convergence uniformly in x. Um, another way to say uh, his result is that if you look at the position where this curve is exactly equal to one half, then uh, the development, the first uh, terms of the development of this uh, median position starts like this, and then you have a, some constant and then a, a small O of one term. And so what does that mean for, for, for probabilist for the BBM? Well, remember that U of XT is one minus the CDF. So what it means is that if you take X one of T and you center by MT, you converge in distribution to a limit random variable whose CDF is described uh, by, by this uh, traveling wave. Okay, is that clear? So that's very classical. So, so Maybe one question you can have when you see, sorry, when you see this result is what does this convergence in distribution mean really, right? So that, that, that you, can, you can have two meaning to convergence in distribution. Well, more than that, but you could see two mean, you could, you, could, you could have two meanings, which would be, the first one would be some sort of an ergodic convergence, meaning that X1 of T oscillates, you know, uh, ergodically around MT. And so if you look at the proportion of time that x1 and a small m uh, spans above uh, some value small x, uh, then this will converge to w of x, right? To this to omega of x, uh, the traveling wave. Or you could have something a bit like in Polya Earn, say, where, uh, well, if you look at x1 minus m, it converges almost surely to something, something random, whose distribution will be this, uh, this omega. And, uh, and here you can think uh, maybe uh, one minute about, you know, what do you think is happening here? Um, and the answer is that it's neither. Um, so another simulation of Eric Bonnet. Uh, so this is a very, you know, well chosen, a very cherry picked uh, simulation. The purple line is uh, the small empty position, okay? And what you see is that you have some early fluctuations by which your initial particle before branching goes down uh, quite fast and then finally start to branch and, and you start creating this cone of particle in space time. But you see, you never, so you never stabilize to a position. You always keep having fluctuations uh, at near the topmost particle, but you never quite catch up this initial lag, this initial advantage you created, right? In the early times of your process. And so you don't have, there is, there is a, so this is 
discussed in a very, very nice paper of Lally and Selk in, the, uh, in 87. And they have a, a super nice two line argument to show that you cannot have um, um, an ergodic convergence. But what, what they show is this really uh, fascinating result, which, which is uh, continue to inspire a lot of research, which is that if you look at, so they have this double limit, okay? So you condition on um, FS, and FS is the information in the branching process up to time S. And you ask what is the conditionally on FS, conditionally on these early times, what is the probability that X1 minus small m is less than X? Eh? And then you let T go to infinity first, then S to infinity, and then you converge to Z. And what you, okay, so, so Z infinity here is a, is a random variable, and it's a limit of what's called the derivative martingale. Okay, so that's part of their result. And um, what, you, what you recognize here is that uh, uh, this is a CDF, you know, conditional on Z infinity, this is a CDF of a Gumball distribution shifted by uh, minus log, uh, uh, CZ infinity, right? And, and that gives you also a, a probabilistic representation of the traveling wave in terms of this, you know, as the Laplace transform in a strange parametrization of this Z infinity variable. Okay, so, so what does this uh, result mean really? Well, it means that the, the early fluctuation creates this, this initial lag or advantage. Actually, I have a minus here, but I'm, I'm wrong, it's a plus log, sorry. So of a plus log CZ infinity over root two or whatever, and that you never forget about this lag. And then given this, this early advantage, then the fluctuations are going to be gumbled, okay? Around MT um, plus uh, uh, log CZ infinity. Now you can say much more, uh, you can be much more precise about what you see near this uh, uh, extreme position. So now what I want to do is I want to, to zoom into a, a compact, uh, around small mt, say, and say, what do I see there? How many particles and where are they? So if you define a script ET to be uh, the point process of the position of your particle, but centered by, M, by small mt, uh, then you will converge to a limit object. And, um, and so, so what is this limit object? Uh, it's a shifted decorated Poisson point process. Okay, so that's, that's quite a mouthful. So let me explain what that is. And this is a, a result which was obtained simultaneously uh, about 10 years ago by Arguin, Bovier, and Kistler, and by uh, Aidekon, myself, Brune, and uh, Zanchi. Okay, so what is this limit object? Right? So, so what I'm claiming is that if you center by small mt and you look at the position of particle, you converge to a limit object E. So what is that? So to construct E, you first need to start with a Poisson point process of intensity cz infinity e minus root two x dx. Okay, so those are, so this is condition, it's a Cox process if you want, it's conditional on z infinity. And, you know, those are those red atom here and I will call those the clan leaders. And I will explain why in, in a minute. Once you have your clan leaders, you need to, you need a, 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 another random point measure, which I call a decoration, okay? So what is the decoration? Well, so it's a random point measure on, on R that you obtain in the following way. First, you take a BBM, but you force it to have a particle, a rightmost particle, which is a bit too far. So instead of being at position MT, which is root two T minus three over two root two log T, you force it to be to the right of root two T. Okay, so it makes an extra displacement of log T, so of constant log T, right? So you force your rightmost particle to be here. And then you look at the particle which have branched of this, uh, this blue trajectory here. Okay, and those are somewhere on the line at time t. And, when, and there's a result which tells you that when you let t go to infinity, this has a limit. Okay, this has a, a limit in t, and that's your decoration. Okay, so what do you do? So, so this decoration is just a random point measure, okay, which has an atom at zero, and all the atoms are actually to the left of zero after that. Um, and what do you do with this decoration? Well, you take all your clan leaders and you decorate them with the ID copies of this decoration for each of them. And you take the superposition of all that, and that is what is this E process, a uh, uh, shifted decorated Poisson point process. So that's, that's essentially the result. Um, yeah, and, and okay, so maybe I can say uh, just a, a word about why, why um, why you have this nice structure. 
in the extremal point process. So the reason is that um, essentially, if you look at the particles which are near the, the rightmost, either they've branched uh, really recently or at the very beginning of the process, not in the middle. And so essentially, those particles which are correspond to the atom of the Poisson point process, they are the clan leaders, and they are the rightmost in their immediate family, in their clan. Okay? It means that among the particles which have branched, let's say, less than t over two units of time in the past, those are the rightmost in the immediate family. And the decoration, well, are all the particles who have forgotten, all those which are not the clan leaders. Okay? And so you can expect something like that. So that's the picture in dimension one. So now let's, let me go back to the goal of this talk, which is to talk about dimensions. Uh, okay, so remember my first question, which was, okay, how, how, how fast does this grow? Where is the maximum, how far is the maximal displacement? So uh, uh, Bastien Malin gave the first uh, uh, answer to this in 2015. He showed that if you define MTD to be root to T plus D minus four over two root to log T, so if D equal one, you recover the minus three over two root two, for instance, then uh, this process here is tight, okay? So you, you don't quite have the convergence intuition, but at least it's tight. And then last year, um, uh, Kim, Lubetsky, and Zaituni, they prove that actually you converge in distribution. Now, what's, what's interesting is that they are even able to prove that you converge in, in distribution to a shifted Gumbel distribution. So really, it looks very much the same, right? That what we had in dimension one, except that their shift, so, so the shift in dimension one, remember, was this Z infinity variable, which, which was a limit of the derivative martingale. So it's measurable with respect to the BBM. In that case, it's really a, a, a convergence in distribution it's not, the shift is not measurable with respect to the branching process. Uh, but I will come back to that because now we can, we can make it uh, measurable. Um, and the second question was uh, the, the story about, you know, where, in which direction uh, you expect to see the, the maximal displacement and to make the question interesting. And remember, you have to ask conditionally on what you observe at the beginning of the process. Uh, and, so, and so what you want to do, well, okay, so let's say you pick a direction theta you project everything on direction theta, and there you have a, just a 1D BBM, as I said. And so you can define the derivative martingale in this direction, which is actually given by this uh, quantity here, where the dot product is just an inner product. And, um, and okay, and for a fixed theta, a fixed direction theta, Z infinity theta exists almost surely. Uh, no problem, you do martingale converge. And uh, remember that uh, essentially this Z infinity theta up to log transformation gives you the, 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 this initial lag, right? And so what you can expect is that your R star of theta will tend to have, you know, it's, it's more probable that you will find R star theta in directions where this limit martingale Z infinity theta is large. So can you define the measure mu with intensity Z infinity theta D theta, in which case, you know, you expect that this is where this measure is large that you will find, you will be, have good chance of finding your maximum. And, and the problem is that this is actually quite hard because Z infinity theta does not exist for all theta simultaneously, right? Okay, it exists for all theta in a, in a countable set simultaneously, of course, but not uh, all theta. And in fact, you can show, because of Bastien uh, results, you can show that, you know, in dimension, let's say, bigger than four, there are points where this is actually the maximum is going to be quite, you know, it's going to be a root to T plus something log T, okay? And so this will become very, very negative, in fact. Uh, and so you will have uh, uh, points where, where this limit does not exist. Okay, so you really have a problem. Okay, but if you do some, uh, some simulations, uh, uh, like this one, for instance, uh, and you, know, you plot this, this green line, which is just uh, MTD uh, plus, again, sorry, log CZT uh, of theta, you see that you really do have direction where this seems to be larger and where you tend to find your maximum uh, more often. And this, is, this was exactly uh, uh, the idea um, when uh, last year with uh, Bastien Malin and Roman Stasinski, a student of mine, we, we tried to, to solve this problem. And what we were able to show is that uh, actually, okay, you cannot guarantee that Z infinity of theta exists for all theta simultaneously, but actually you can find a random measure, uh, a, a random set of full measure, sorry, capital theta, uh, such that it exists for all theta in this set, okay? And because, of course, you know, integration is only defined up to measure of null, you know, up to uh, null sets, 
then uh, you can you can you can say that as a measure uh, zt converge weakly to z infinity and z infinity will have uh, density uh, this thing where you define it to be zero on the complement of theta so, so okay so although there is a, a you know a real difficulty here you can overcome it by by by, by changing a, a little bit the way the, the usual techniques works and and, and really proving this uh, that you have this. Okay, so once you're, you're, you're equipped with that, essentially what you do is you, you, you take uh, uh, offer um, uh, Lubetsky and, uh, and, uh, and Eugene Kim uh, results. You take this result, you put them together and, and essentially and you work with it and you can actually describe what happened for the VBM in dimension B. So for instance, if you ask me what is the probability that um, the direction uh, of this maximal displacement is in some uh, uh, cone or some angle direction theta, um, sorry, A, capital A, given Fs. And like in Lali and Selke, you, you first let T go to infinity and then S to infinity. Then this will converge to this Z infinity of A. Okay. Uh, and actually, this is wrong. So I wrote, I wrote that recently. You need to renormalize, right? So this is Z infinity of A divided by Z infinity of A. Uh, of the whole sphere, sorry, but it's proportional to that. Um, so this measure at infinity really describes, the, the, as I was saying, this uh, the direction of this maximum. So it's important to understand that the maximum will not be always in the same direction, right? It will fluctuate in various directions. But if you ask, you know, what is the proportion of time that it will spend in the direction uh, capital A, then it will be proportional to that. Uh, okay. And if you want to describe uh, the full uh, extremal uh, point process, uh, a bit like we did in the one dimension. Uh, okay, so you have the same result, same type of result. You know, you can say that ET, so here, what is ET? ET is a point process of position, but in a polar coordinate, okay? So this is a delta in theta i t and uh, uh, ri centered by this MD quantities that Bastien introduced. So this is a point process now on the sphere time r. And, uh, and you converge again to a shifted decorated Poisson point process. Now the clan leaders are those uh, red theta i xi, which is again a, a point process on, on the sphere time r. It's a PPP with intensity. Okay, so you can, you can uh, factorize the part in theta and the part in x. And the part in theta is this z infinity of theta sigma of the theta. Uh, and then you have some constant time e minus root two x dx, which is the same um, intensity for the modulus that you had uh, uh, in dimension one. And okay, so those are the clan leaders. What about the decoration di here? I have a sum of a y in the decoration di, you see. Um, those are uh, IID copies of the 1D decoration d. And you see also one thing which is interesting here is that this only affects the second coordinates, not the angle. And I think this is not too hard to see why. This is a large C limit, right? So let's say you start at zero and, uh, and you'll, you'll have a clan leaders, which is in some, some direction theta here. But now we have taken T to infinity. So this is really very far. At first order, this is a distance root to T away, right? And this is my clan leaders. So what are the, 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 the decoration? Well, those are the particles which have um, branched off this trajectory. Maybe one is here, maybe one is here, I don't know. But you see, because they are very far away, of course, this angle here is zero. Okay, so there is no decoration on the angle. The decoration is only on the distance to, to um, is only on the center distance to the origin. Right, so I have a, a few more minutes, so I can, so I, you know, I, I won't go into much details for, 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 for the proof, but I, I want to give a couple of ideas of, uh, of what are the tools we, we, we use. So the, technically the way uh, the proof works is that we, um, we prove convergence of the, of the Laplace transforms of ET and we identify the limit. And then maybe three uh, elements of the proof that I can discuss are uh, the fact that we identify what where or which are the particles which really contribute to this uh, ZT measure, the question of the localization of the path of the extremal particles and uh, the stabilization of the, of the angular process. So the way that uh, Lubetsky, uh, Kim, and, uh, and uh, Zaytouni uh, worked, the, the way that their proof work, how they prove there's this convergence in distribution, is that they look at all the particles and they weight them um, 
by something which looks very much okay. So, so they, they forget about the angle first. So they only look at the modulus. So if you only look at the modulus, what you have is you have a branching system of particles on the positive half line, and the movement of the particles are Bessel process. Okay, so those are the Ri. Okay, so what they do is that they, they, they weigh them by something which really is you know, very close to what the derivative martingale weight of the particle of the 1D BBM is, except you pre-multiply it by this Ri to the power minus D minus one over two. And, um, and then they claim that actually there is only a very specific set of particles that matter for, um, for, for them, which are the particles which are very close to being uh, far to the right, so close to, to root to t, but uh, at a distance where you still have quite enough of them. Okay? So there's this balance between being far away to the right and having enough particle to, to contribute enough mass. Uh, and their Goldilocks region is, you know, that you have to be a distance between t to the uh, to the one third or one six here, and t to the two third uh, behind with two t. Okay, and if you do that and you look at mt, which is a sum over this specific region of the of the weights, uh, well, this is not quite a martingale, but they do show that it converges to some limit and infinity in distribution, and this infin infinity for them, for them is a shift. That, that's their shift. Uh, and so what, 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 we, what we prove here is a generalization. Well, okay, so what we prove is that actually this converges to, um, to something which is not only, so here it's a convergence in distribution. We have a convergence in probability to uh, Z infinity, okay? And so uh, the shift here that, that, that allows you to identify the shift as something related to the limit of the derivative martingale, so measurable, with respect to the process. Uh, so you have that in particular that this MT here converge in probability to a constant times that infinity integrated over the whole sphere. Okay, and it's, and it's also more precise because it's not that hard to actually keep the information about the angle inside this, converg this convergence, uh, which is what we do. Um, okay, and you also get a, a Lally and Selke type result for the maximal displacement that, that was absent. So that's the first, uh, that's the first uh, ingredient. So the second ingredient is, uh, is this uh, localization of paths. So again, this is essentially an argument which is already in um, Kim Lub uh, Lubetsky and, uh, and Zaituni. Okay, and essentially they say that if you want to look that with very high probability when t is large enough, uh, the particles which are actually far away from zero, so at distance more than MTD plus some Y, say, okay, which finishes far away from zero, well, the path that they have followed uh, from, uh, from, from the start is going to have certain properties with high probability. Okay, so I, I, want, I don't want to give all the properties, but essentially one of them which is important is that at some time capital L, which goes to infinity, but slower than T, which is, uh, small compared to t, then your, your particle will be in one of those uh, n win particle uh, here, right? The, the distance to root to, to s, to root to l, will be between um, t, l to the one six and l to the two third. And the, the, the third and, uh, and, and last uh, uh, component or ingredient I want to discuss is this really stupid looking uh, uh, geometric uh, lemma, but which actually does a lot of work for us. Okay, so uh, remember I said that if you look at the polar coordinate RT and theta T, RT is just a Bessel process, but conditionally in RT, theta T is just going to be a diffusion on the sphere. And in fact, the diffusivity constant of, uh, of theta is, um, is RT to the minus two. So as RT goes to infinity, the diffusivity of the angular part goes to zero. And, and you can understand that this will actually converge to a limit uh, direction. But you can be, you can be um, so you need something quantitative and, and there is something uh, really nice that happens when you look at particles which go far away. Because the particles that, the external particles go faster than a, than a normal basin. They actually go at ballistic speed. And so, uh, so you know, for instance, that the particle which is you know, um, uh, far away at time t. So let's say at distance more than MTD plus y, that is outside of this black circle. At time uh, L, we know it's already quite, a, you know, by, by the previous result, 
it's already quite far away from zero, so at distance root two L. Say. And so uh, you have you, what you're looking for is a particle which is outside of the black circle, but you also know that you know the farthest particle away from from this red dot, L minus T minus L unit of time later, has to be in a circle which is this red circle which has um, this uh, this radius here. And just by these two facts, when you like T uh, 10 to infinity and then L 10 to infinity. The angle in which this uh, this um, the descent of this uh, uh, you know particle red particle here, which is in the north direction, the angle where it can be will be um, constrained and it will essentially tend to uh, the north to north to the north direction as well. So what that means is that uh, the 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 furthest descendant um, from particle which is already far away at time l at a later time t has to be in the same direction essentially, and uh, that's basically what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Julian. And we are open for questions, comments. I, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't understand very well how this random measure that you have, which is an interesting object, how this depends on the branching Brownian motion. So in each direction you have, you know, for every time t, in each direction you have this quantity z t theta, right? Yes. Okay, so the problem is that you cannot say that this has a limit for all theta. Simultaneously. Yes. So this you claim that it's not the case, really. Yeah, it's really not the case. Yeah. You have an exceptional direction where this does not converge at all. Because to infinity, minus infinity, uh, it oh. oscillates, it's, it's bad. But as, as a, but, but as a measure, it converges. Right? You have a weak, uh, weak convergence as a measure, essentially. And you can also show what the other thing we can show is that uh, this limit, that infinity of theta, exists almost surely for almost every theta. So there oh, is I a, see you have exceptional directions, yeah. but only an outset, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you for the talk. Uh, are there a um, discrete version of this model, meaning a branching random walk? And I guess so. And if in that case, which results are stable in this? Uh... Oh, okay. So, so in, in one dimension, so th there is a lot of universality uh, claimed uh, in these results. In the sense that, for instance, in one dimension, uh, for for branching along walks, you know, as long as as uh, the, the branching is uh, or the, the 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 jumps are not too bad, then you will you will have the same picture. Right? You, have, you will have a shifted the corrected Poisson point process. There's been a lot of work um, uh, about that, uh, and I won't cite anybody because I will forget a lot of people otherwise. And and I think that here the, the same thing uh, should be true. If you have, you have to be a bit careful about keeping the anisotropy of the of the model. I think, uh, and I think that, uh, but okay, I think Nina is working actually on, on something like that. And yeah, yeah. This. I mean, the thing is that also with the di with the directions. I mean, for branching Brownian motion, obviously it's anyway anisotropic. Uh, it's anyway uh, rotationally invariant. Yeah, yeah, and. So for 1D branching random walk, you need exponential moments. Yeah. And now for branching random walk in higher dimension, of course, it, it gets a bit complicated. You could have exponential moments in some directions, but not in others. Yeah. But I would actually assume that the result Julian presented is, is universal if yeah. you have all exponential moments, exactly. let's say. Let's, let's say if you have something where the, the jumps are compactly supported, or, you know, the, the, right. then, then, then clearly... Uh, something like that should hold, yeah. Any more questions? If not, let's uh, thanks. Thank you.